Any movie where she's acting it, I can recognize a certain way of looking at the world, like when I'm looking at a painting by Matisse, or uh, a film by John Ford, or you know a dialogue by Truffaut. You know there is a sort of note, a sort of tone, you know, which is her art. If you were in your twenties in the sixties, she was great. She was it. She was so beautiful. Polanski worked with him, and Truffaut, but most of all Benoit. The French sort of deify certain people, especially women, in the way that they did with Piaf, with Miss Danguette. These people become more than simply performers. They, they embody an element of France. And to the French, Deneuve embodies a certain quality in, in France. Attention, elle est encore pleine d'épingles. One of the, the, your early hits when you were 20, Le Parapluie de Cherbourg, yeah. was, I mean, it was extraordinary because it was a street opera. Yes. A very difficult film for a 20 year old. I mean, how yes. did you manage that? Because it was a great director, it was Jacques Demy, and that was a big difference, you know. I don't know what it could have been with someone else, you know, the project was his project and uh, what he had, uh, you know, decided to do with that film really belongs to him. It's very difficult to know, to imagine what it could have been with someone else. It's really his project and it's a, it's a very peculiar experience and I was lucky enough to have that kind of experience at a very young age, early age. It's very important to work with such incredible directors, you know, young. I remember almost all the film because as with the film was done in playback, you know, I had to learn the film before we started shooting. It was quite an incredible experience, it's a very difficult one for the director because he had to know exactly the schedule, the timing exactly of the scene because everything was written before we started shooting, filming. Parapluie de Sherbourg is very important to Deneuve's career and character, I think. Demi, who had a, a very curious vision, when you think about it, to do these kind of sprechgesang semi-musicals, again, I think he seduced her and showed her how beautiful she could be in this by, by emphasizing her sadness. He is essentially a sad director, a director of, of, of melancholy. And, and the, the melancholy that he extracted from her in that film is deeply touching. The last scene where she sees her, her uh, ex-lover again when she's married to, the, in the, she's in the rich loveless marriage and they meet in, in, the, in the gas station he runs and there's the little girl and the mink coat and, and the snow. This just brings tears to the eyes every time you see it. Nothing is said, but it's that sense of, of despair and melancholy that, that the French just love. I mean, it's Verlaine, it's Rambo, it's, uh, it's that sense of, of elegant melancholy and despair. It's really in Parapluie that you see that, that sad element of Deneuve, which is so deeply moving. Things got a lot darker and tougher and more dangerous with repulsion. Well, no, it was a very cheerful experience. It's a repulsion. very... Repulsion was a, a very peculiar film because Roman was working for the first time in England. Gérard Brache, Just near here. Yes, his scriptwriter <laughs> was also uh, coming in, in, in London for the film. And me, we were the only three, the three of uh, speaking French, you know, and working in French, even if we were shooting in English because I speak very little in the film. It was a very, uh, very cheerful experience, you know. It was not at all the dark film that you see on screen, no, no, to shoot, it was wonderful. In Repulsion, of course, the sense of, of, of her being perfectly normal, except the rotted rabbit inside her purse, this is really one of the 
the nastiest scenes, and not only in a film by her, but a film by Polanski. To me, though, it's it, it's more a Polanski film. She's she's a creature. She's his creature, as all Polanski heroines are. They're his creatures. It, it isn't it isn't echt de nerve. The, the most terrifying aspect of it is that you don't speak, and actually, the audience then has to work out how your madness is moving. I mean, how did Polanski talk you through that, or did he? he you know, Roman Polanski. Uh, is a director that uh, worked and was uh, in uh, in Poland in one of the best school of cinema. So he learned everything, you know, from the light to the sound to the yes. And he's also an actor, so he used to really uh, show to actors and actors and, and me, you know, what he really wanted. I mean, what he wanted to do and how he would expect, you know, things to happen. And uh, he was very. Uh, very important, you know, in the in the in the shooting as far as direction is, he is going. Did he very physical? Yes. Was that for you? A happier experience than working on what has become the kind of leitmotif, which is Belle de Jour. Oh yes, it was. Well, it was very difficult. The relation with Benoel was more difficult because I didn't know him much. We had a big difference of age. The producer were in the in the in the middle. You know, it was a very difficult uh, story. It's very lonely, lonely himself and lonely the way he works and. It's very difficult to to talk to him or to try to understand him. He makes a film on his own. It was a very different kind of character. She was very uh, maintained, and there was a no. It was a complete different experience, you know, from uh, working with Roman Polanski. But I did, I did like the result. I liked the script. I was very, uh, very pleased to work with Benoel, of course. Arrête! Jean Ne crie pas, et tu cries, je te tue, tu m'entends Pierre, Pierre, je t'en supplie. Je te demande pardon, Pierre. De tout mon cœur. Truffaut said that you were a great person, the best person to play a kind of double-sided character. And in a way, that's, many of your characters have been like that. Well, Belle Le Jour has been very attached to, to, to me, you know, it's still today, you know, when I'm uh, told about Belle Le Jour, it's still something that people think she might be a little, you know, it's been very attached to, my, uh, to, my, to me personally, you know, people relate to me very much as Belle Le Jour when they talk to me. Uh, as an actress, you know, in the States or even here, you know, I can see that Belle de Jour is still very, very present, you know, very... But uh, it's because it's a very unusual and very special uh, character in a special film, you know, treating on the fantasy of a feminist uh, sexuality, it's very, was very unusual at the time, so it stayed very, something very powerful. Do you make films for other people or for yourself? No. <laughs> I make films for, for people, but I don't care very much about people. I, I, I want to be sincere with myself, that's all. If the public, if the audience likes it, all right. If not, so much worse. So I don't care. Wait. A nouveau, s'il vous plaît. Catherine. 